This is a quick revision video for A-level computer science students for how to tackle little man computer um, assembly instruction questions, exam questions. So my top tip is to um, use your finger or um, a pencil or a rubber or something that points to where you are on the program and just step through line by line in order and draw a box next to the question to keep track of the value that is stored in the accumulator register. Remember that all um, uh, instructions that say dat are data values and if it doesn't have a value next to it it starts at zero so in this case um, the only one that had a, a value next to it already was one remember this is von Neumann which means that it can have both instructions and data within the same memory space final thing to remember each register can only store one value so as soon as there's a value in here when you replace that, it is replacing it. It's not storing two values at the same time. OK, so let's step through. We start at the beginning with imp. Imp means input, and the question tells us that the first input is 12, and that input goes into the accumulator. So I'm going to move my finger on the question paper or the pencil or whatever you've used to point to the next instruction, and the mnemonic is STA, which is store. We're storing the value in the accumulator into the address specified by num1. We don't know what actual value num1 is, we just know it points to this data value down here. So the 12 that was in the accumulator is now stored at num1. So that's what a variable is. It's just the name of a address which can store a value. Right, let's move on to the next input. The question tells us the next input is 5, so that goes into the accumulator register. And we're going to store that, help, just want to move one of them. There we go, I'm going to store that into num2. So the 5 that was and is in the accumulator is now also stored at num2. All right, next, it looks like we're going to do a loop here, because we've got a label, and we wouldn't have a label unless we wanted to loop back to it later. So we'll load the value from num1, which is 12, put that in the accumulator. Now, if you're likely to make a mistake, it will probably be here because there's two possible ways of interpreting this and only one of them is correct. Do you take 12 away from 5? No. Do you take 5 away from 12? Yes, because sub means take the value specified by the memory location in the operand. So that's num2 points to the value 5. Take that 5 away from what's currently in the accumulator and then store the result back into the accumulator. So 12 take away 5 is 7. BRP means branch if positive or 0. So 7 is positive or 0. So we go down to, here we go, um, because pos is a memory location specified by this label. Right, we're going to store the result from the accumulator into num1. So we're replacing that 12 with what was in the accumulator. We're going to load into the accumulator the value at count. So count is currently zero, so a zero goes into the accumulator. We're going to add one. Now this is direct um, address mode, so this um, label would actually be a memory address. And we look at that memory address to find the value one. Um, so I'm just going to put um, the value that was in the accumulator plus that one into the accumulator, store that back into count, so count goes from zero to one, and branch always back to main. Yeah, we said it was gonna be a loop. Right, we've done this before. Load num1, so num1 is seven. We replace the value in the accumulator with seven. We know which way to do this now. We take five away from seven and put the result back in here, so that's two, which is still positive. So we're gonna loop back around again to the same place. We store that 2 from the accumulator to replace the value at num1. We load the value currently at count, which is 1. We add 1 to that 1 to get 2, and we store that back into our count register. Sorry, not register, memory location. And we go back around again. Here we go. Right, we're going to load the value at num1, which is 2. It's already in the accumulator, that's fine. We take five away from two to get minus three. And we branch if positive or zero. Well, minus three is not positive or zero, so we don't branch, we move on to not pos. 
So we load in the value at count, which is two. We output that two from the accumulator. We load the value specified at the memory location, num1, which is two again, and we output that. So I'm not going to go through all of these, but hopefully that gives you enough to be able to step through and see. So what's actually going on here? There's, I'm sorry, let's move on to the, the next question here. It says, write an algorithm using pseudocode that has the same functionality. Um, so we're going to do this two ways. Um, we'll do the long way first, and then we'll see if we can work out why the short way um, works. I'm going to need a text box. I should have got this ready beforehand, but um, oh well, bear with me. Um, I'm just going to crop this so we don't get the lines to irritate us. Come on, picture format, crop. There we go, seamless um, video skills. Uh -huh. Oh, and I've lost my text box. Blooming PowerPoint. There we go. Right, so let's do it as literally as we can, which would get you the marks if you're doing this kind of question. We want an input. Remember, there's no syntax marks in pseudocode. You can write this in C Sharp, in JavaScript, in Python, or the exam reference language, which is quite similar to Python. It doesn't really matter as long as the logic is um, clear. And we store it at num1. Well, that's a label, but a label is just like a variable. So we'll go num1 equals stupid PowerPoint trying to auto capitalize. There we go. Um, and you know what? I'm going to use the same trick for writing out the pseudocodes that we know what we're referring to. I've just done these two here. Then we get another input and we store it to num2. So num2 is equal to input. No capitalization. Thank you very much, Word. Um, OK. Then we've got a label, which we'll probably come back to later. Um, but for now, let's just load num1 and sub num2. How can we do that in a high level programming language? Well, we need to make sure we get the order right. Num1 is in the accumulator. We're going to take away num2 from it. Num1, take away num2. And then if that is positive, we're going to jump somewhere. So that sounds like an if statement. So if that is greater than or equal to zero, then we're going to do something. What are we going to do? The stuff in here. Right. First of all, store num1. We'll store what into num1? Well, we had something into the accumulator, which was num1 minus num2. That needs to be num1. We also need to increase count by 1. So count, oops, can't spell plus plus or plus equals one if you're used to Python. But we can't do that unless we initialize count. That's done at the bottom of the program in Little Man Computer, but we should probably do it at the top so that it runs right at the beginning of the program. And then we're going to branch back to main. So this looks like a, a loop. This is going to happen more than once. So it's not just an if statement. It's a while loop because it keeps happening repeatedly. So all of this keeps going until we eventually get to not pause, in which case we are going to load count and display it. So can we print or output? Doesn't really matter what you use. Console at right line, whatever. Let's print count and also display um, num1. So that would get you all of the marks. It does do what the question um, in Little Man Computer tells us to do, or we could recognize that um, in here, what we're actually displaying first is um, the number of times that our second input goes into our first input, that's integer division, and then we're going to display the remainder. So integer division and remainder, we could just do that in our high-level program, high programming language and stick with our two inputs. The first one is how many times it goes into it. So print num1 
um, integer division num2 and then the second number is the modulo the remainder after dividing like so hope that's helpful all the very best for the exam